Hey everybody, Court Jones here, and I want to thank all of you for following along this entire time and going through the course, doing all the work. I hope you found some value in it. Now, I know the course in places got a little technical and all the stuff about breaking down the drawing into several steps might have seemed a little like overkill, but the fundamental part of the course is probably the most important. It's, it's the foundation on which everything you do afterwards is going to be built. And the stronger fundamentals you have, the better you're gonna be later on in your career as an artist doing caricatures. The second part of the course has a lot of value as well. I mean, it has interesting techniques and strategies for doing more advanced types of exaggerations or ways of figuring things out when you get stuck with a roadblock. But the fundamental course, part one, I think is really where it's at and really what you need to focus on if you want to uh, develop yourself as a caricaturist. Out of all the videos though in the second part of the course, I think probably the most valuable exercise would have been the making caricature lists because that one is really about setting your intention and organizing your thoughts, figuring out what you want to do with the caricature. That more than any other is probably the, probably the most helpful and the most logical way to help overcome any difficulties you're having in a caricature. Sit down, write a list, think about what you want to do before you actually do it. That way when you're drawing, you'll already have those directives or those guideposts to hit. So I hope it made sense how and why I broke down the course the way I did. I just think it's the most logical way to develop from a very beginning artist who doesn't know anything about caricature to the levels of a master, hopefully. Now, just watching the videos over and over again isn't really gonna do much for you. It's kind of like if you had an exercise video at home and watched it over and over without actually getting up to do the exercises. After you know the exercises and how to work out, then you actually have to go to the gym and lift the weights over and over. It's that repetition and the long duration over time which is going to make you stronger and better. So it's the same concept. Caricaturing is really just the art of being able to make good, clear, strong decisions about how to change your subject's face to make it more exaggerated, to improve the likeness. Just knowing the exercises, how to do them, just watching me do them, isn't enough. It's only through the application and repetition of these exercises by your own hand and with your own brain that you actually develop the skills to make good decisions on your own about the human face. Drawing funny caricatures is actually more about your mental attitude and your state of mind and your willingness to take risks than it is about any kind of skill set or how you hold your pencil or how you shade. In short, you just can't worry about how other people are going to perceive or react to your sketch. Whether you're doing a commission for a private client or a political caricature for a magazine or drawing someone live on the spot, you can't worry about how they're going to react if you're going to make them feel bad about themselves or the person that you're drawing, they're gonna hate you for doing it. That kind of stuff is the biggest mental roadblock to exaggeration. You need to throw all that aside and not worry about what people are going to say about it or what they're going to think of you for doing it. The only person you should please when you're doing these caricatures is yourself. And if you have good taste, if you have good skills and a good eye, drawings that please you as the artist will generally please most people. You should strive for excellence in your art and in your caricatures, but don't worry about trying to achieve perfection. I mean, there's really no such thing as perfect anyway, and it's just an impossible standard. And even if you did achieve a perfect drawing where it's perfectly rendered and shaded and painted, there's no artistry in that really. It's, there's no artistry in perfection. It's, it's the imperfections, it's the, the subtle nuance of the way you handle a paintbrush or the way you draw a line that makes it interesting. That's what people respond to when they have their favorite artists they like to watch and follow. They're responding to how that artist interprets things and makes decisions. If everybody drew perfectly, everybody would be drawing and painting the same way. So you're going to develop more of a personal voice, an audience, a client base, uh, if you allow your own imperfections to come through. You know, I love John Singer Sargent, but I don't love him because his artwork was perfect. You know, I love the way he handled his highlights, you know, but they're sometimes just swooshes of color. If you look up real close, there's nothing perfect about them. They're drawn extremely well and they're placed correctly and they're a good value. They have all the foundation principles in place. They're very sound, but how he actually handles it and executes it is very unique to his own personal style, the shakiness of his hand or the bristles on his paintbrush. So it's that kind of thing that will draw people to your art. It's 
what makes us all unique, and you should strive for uniqueness, not perfection. So to keep engaged and keep yourself motivated in caricature, it's helpful to have a group to play with, to respond to, and whose work you can respond to. It's great on social media. There's competitions that you can join every week on social media, like on Facebook, where you have a subject that you have to draw, and everybody tries to draw the same subject. And there's a certain sense of community in that. You get to know other artists, see what they're doing, how they're handling the same problems. You can learn a lot from other people just by being in that group. You should surround yourself with the type of people that you want to be like. And if you can't do that in real life, at least you can do it online. Uh, but there are groups like the International Society of Caricature Artists. I've been a member of them for like, I don't know, 18 years. And I go to their annual conventions and it's one of the best things I've done for myself personally. Uh, it's a community of like-minded caricature artists who get together once a year and we have competitions and seminars and learn from each other and it's just good times. Uh, the next one's actually coming up in uh, later this year in 2018 in uh, San Diego in November, so anyone's interested. I'll be there probably giving a talk, so it might be a good chance to meet some other fellow artists. So if you want to make your living purely as a caricature artist, there are a few avenues you can follow. Now, I started as a live quick sketch artist in theme parks. Now I just do private events where I draw at parties and uh, trade shows and that sort of thing. And that pay for that can be really good. You can make a living off that. But I also do illustration work and commission work on the side. I'll do a painting for someone who wants a caricature just as a gift for someone who's retiring or their spouse. So I would actually recommend starting in a field where you can actually work with other artists like a theme park. And if you're young, it's a pretty good job to have. You're actually getting paid to draw and you get thrown in like on day one, just right in the fire, no pencils, no erasing allowed, and you have to get good fast. And it's stressful, and I personally hated it the first few months I was doing live caricatures in a theme park. But I'm glad I stuck with it because it's developed into so many other things for me. But as a freelance caricature artist working out of my studio, there's a lot of options. I've done stuff for magazines like editorial illustrations or someone has a book idea that they want a caricature cover for or I've designed Halloween masks with sort of celebrities as Halloween masks. I've done character design for animation on a freelance basis a few times. Packaging illustration. Every now and then somebody wants a caricature or a caricatured version of something like a dog on their bag of dog food. It's, it's been done. So there's just so many options out there for a caricature artist. It's really kind of endless. And when you have the skills to caricature something, you can apply it to more traditional type illustrations and portraiture. I have always say that all art is a form of caricature. Even like John Singer Sargent, who did these beautiful portraits, would you know, make the neck a little longer, the person thinner, the eyes larger, to be more flattering. And that's a type of caricature where you're changing something about your subject, whether conscious or not, to uh, have a certain effect. It doesn't always have to be funny, but you can caricature the human figure to be more muscular, to look like the Incredible Hulk for comic books. That's just a form of caricature. So caricature is really everywhere. There's hardly anyone who doesn't caricature to some degree in their artwork. So caricature, in one form or another, is all around us and there's no getting away from it. So if you have those skills to manipulate the face and the human body in a way that other people can't, you'll have an edge on your competition. And in art, it's just generally good to be flexible. You don't want to only be able to do one type of art because you may find the caricature aspect might be more successful for you financially later on down the road. You just never know going into it uh, what your life will end up turning out to be. I know I've been able to travel around the world doing caricature conferences where people fly me out there. I've met some of my best friends through caricature. I've met my wife at the annual caricature artist convention. So it's definitely encompassed my entire life and I don't regret a minute of it. But figuring out if you want to be a live retail or quick sketch caricature artist versus an illustration caricature artist uh, is kind of a matter of temperament. I mean, you can do both, I do both. But I always looked at the place of live quick sketch caricature is sort of synonymous with improv sketch comedy up on a stage where you have some actors and you give them a situation and they make this really funny scene out of the suggestions you make. They're working with what they have in the moment. There's no do-overs, it's all live. There's no erasers. That's kind of like what live quick sketch is like. You're trying to entertain and make people laugh in a few minutes based on the information you have in front of you. You have to adapt to the situation and uh, read the person across from you to figure out how much exaggeration you can get away with comfortably. Whereas caricature illustration and fine art caricature painting, that's more like uh, more like making a movie than it is like improv sketch comedy, where you're 
making a feature film where you can cast all the characters, set up the lighting the way you want, do your research with the reference photos, spend as much time as you want painting it and refining it and editing it until it's exactly the piece of art that you want it to be. So if you know yourself and you know what kind of temperament you have, you could figure out what you want to go into. If you want to try to do both, that's great. I suggest everyone start with Quick Sketch Caricature because it really does uh, put your feet to the fire and you learn the principles of caricature and how to apply them in real world situations fast. Just like some of the best actors I like started out as comedians or improv sketch comedians, comedy is a lot harder than drama, so I wouldn't necessarily say that caricature is harder than traditional art and portrait work, it's just a different set of skills, uh, but I think uh, I like doing both and I think you will too. Now at the end of this course, if you're not the caricature artist you want to be, don't worry, you're not meant to make all these leaps and bounds so quickly. It'll take years. It's taken me years to get where I'm going. And I'm still not there yet. I'm still developing and learning, hopefully. Uh, but it's just with the constant repetition and the practice of these exercises and just drawing faces over and over again and being brave and bold where you're going to actually improve and you'll notice it after a while where you'll look back and you'll see the progress that you've made and wonder how those sketches that you did 10 years ago were done by you because they were so bad and you didn't see it at the time. Your eye will improve and your hand will improve. You just have to have faith. I hate to say this part, but it never gets any easier. You still have problems that you try to overcome in your caricature or in your any kind of drawing, but you trade in your old problems for new ones. So you, at a certain point, you won't have trouble with the fundamentals anymore. You'll have mastered those. But your new problems will be more about the subtleties, about how to design the shapes in a beautiful and interesting way, or how to control your values or your quality of your paint strokes. You know, I look at paintings I've done even just a year ago, and while they're much better than what I did when I started doing this, I still don't like them because I've, in that time, grown a little bit more and I just see problems that I didn't notice at the time, like, oh, it's too stiff or it's maybe too sloppy and I need to improve upon that. The improving and the changing and the learning never stops. I guess that's the exciting thing about it because it's never gonna get boring. There's no upper limit to how you develop as an artist. You all start in the same place at level zero, but you keep on going and where you go and how far you go is totally up to you. Okay, time for some shameless self-promotion. Since I'm all done with my Proco caricature coursework, I'll have more time to do my own stuff. So be sure to follow my Court Jones YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram at Court Jones Artist. It's my last day of filming here at the Proco studio and Stan is out of town so I thought I'd take this opportunity to do something that's been bugging me for a while. So we have this skeleton here in this office. It's been here forever. We got SEAL Team Rick on here right now but uh, you know I just always thought it was a crime that we didn't have a real skelly. So what I bought just for Stan here, a little present, I got little eyeballs that I'm going to put in skelly to uh, you know, watch over the, the group. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. So we really want to make sure Stan sees this when he comes back. I guess we'll just put it right here in his office when he opens the door. <laughs> <laughs>